Hello and welcome, welcome to Sega News Bits Live, a lunchtime edition. So uh, in the comments, tell me what you are eating if it is lunchtime where you are. Uh, if it's dinner time, I will accept dinner comments as well, but no breakfast, I'm sorry. Breakfast is closed at 11. So without further ado, let's jump right into the news. So there's been a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog movie stuff going on. Uh, <laughs> too too much to cover. In fact, I, I'm really glad that I did this now instead of earlier in the day because the poster for Sonic the movie too. And I have to keep saying the movie because, you know, to me, when still, Sonic 2 is the game. And so it's kind of killing me now that when you do a Google search, you're going to be getting the movie stuff over the original game. And, and now Knuckles is there, but Sonic 2 was not really Knuckles until you locked it on with Sonic and Knuckles. So it's it's going to get even more confusing, I am sure, when the third one comes out, because people are already speculating that it's going to be like Shadow, Metal Sonic, and I mean, that that's more Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic CD and not Sonic 3. So, I mean, we're at the point now where these aren't even light adaptations of um, of some of the, uh, the games that we've been playing. But yeah, uh, before I start doing the screen share stuff... Um, yeah, it's it's been a very interesting ride with this franchise. Um, I've been there since day one. It was it was over what two years ago um, that George and I were doing videos talking about this. And to be quite honest, the Sonic movie franchise looked like a train wreck. It looked terrible. Um, it looked like worse than Elven and the Chipmunks. It was like Sonic and human friends goofing around. Terrible, terrible terrible design for Sonic. Um, and then things changed. Like, uh, Backlash actually caused, I think, Sega over Paramount. I think Sega's like, we cannot have another failure on our hands after, you know, Sonic Boom had happened, Sonic 4. Like, it just would have been... I don't think Sonic will ever die, so I wouldn't want to say another nail in the coffin, but it definitely would not help the franchise. Um, and so, yeah, they did a complete... Re, rehab, refurbishment, refresh, did a fantastic redesign to Sonic. And the great thing is, because it was a CG character, they could go in in post-production and actually fix the film. Um, I very much doubt we ever would have seen Tails uh, with the first iteration of what the movie was. Um, I, I think it honestly would have been this ugly design Sonic, and then that would have been it. One and done. Fans would hate the movie. The movie would do okay at the box office for families. Um, but wow, what what a difference uh, a few years make. Because now we have uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie 2, or Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And here's the poster. The poster was just revealed uh, a few hours ago. And you can ignore all that weird, like, <laughs> colors on the side. That's, I guess, to make it more social media friendly. Um, but the poster itself is there. To me, it looks a little busy. Uh, it's kind of weird to have like multiple Sonics and multiple Knuckles on the poster. It almost has the vibe of like an international poster, like from an Asian country where they just really go all out. Um, but there are some interesting things. You can see like Labyrinth Zone um, designs there with the owl heads, which are actually, I think the, the smartest things the series, the film series has done is that they took something that was just kind of a little aesthetic thing in Sonic 1, which were these kind of owl-like faces in these old ruins, and actually turned it into a plot point with, like, owls. <laughs> and I, I think that's the smartest thing the first movie did, and it's interesting because the only other Sonic movie is the OVA, which also featured an old man owl who, I don't think he was a mentor to Sonic, but he was definitely his senior. Um, we see here then, if uh, if I can zoom in, we see the... Oh, this is great. I've never been able to do analysis. Um, you can see here it's the, I believe, Master Emerald Shrine. They have not made it clear if this movie is going to have the floating island, but it does seem like they're passing over the seven Chaos Emeralds and really just focusing on a Master Emerald, um, which seems to be emerald-sized. But then again, the Sonic Adventure 2 game had the emerald changing in size a lot to the point where Knuckles was actually carrying it around in one hand. Um, over here on the other side, I don't know how I move. Let's see if I can. Oh boy, this is fun. 
uh, this is fun, learn how to use, uh, you know, let me see, I'll zoom out and then zoom back in, there we go. There will be a snowy area. Um, we've seen snowboarding in the past. Of course, <laughs> Tom and Maddie are back. I think they're actually going to her sister's wedding in Hawaii, which I believe will be the finale to the movie. Um, and then we have uh, a much better looking Jim Carrey as Robotnik. And I hear people say, oh, he, uh, he doesn't do sequels. So this is a big deal. He does do, do, do sequels. He did Dumb and Dumber 2. Um, so it's not, it's not beneath him. And, you know, I, I think he does a good job. I've heard people joking he should have fattened up for the role. But, you know, I, I mean, we've seen different iterations of Eggman. Uh, it's almost like Boom Eggman, where he's kind of skinny and maybe he could just become a little more barrel-chested. Um, I've seen people complaining about the billing here. So we have James Marsden, Ben Schwartz, Idris Elba, and Jim Carrey. And if we compare this to the previous movie posters, so let's bring this up here. We have the first poster, and this is actually not the final one. The final one actually had the, by, the credits below the date there. I just couldn't find a high-res image of that. But as you can see, it was James Marsden, Jim Carrey. There was no Ben Schwartz, um, no other characters credited. And the main reason for this is is that it just comes down to who was um, signed on as an actor at a time, who, what their contract stipulates, their pay, all these things. Um, it's, it's likely that James Marsden was the first actor to sign on. Jim Carrey came second. So even though Jim Carrey is the bigger name, probably got more money, Marsden, maybe just by signing on to the project first, got top billing. Um, you know, with the voice actors, it's probably also likely that they just either hired uh, Schwartz later on, or again, his his contract just didn't stipulate it. Um, it's unfortunate, but I you're not going to see Colleen's name added to the um, sequel poster anytime soon. Maybe you'll see it like on home video. Maybe she'll rework, you know, talk to the studio, get something done there. Or in the third one, maybe, if Tails returns with Colleen doing the voice. I mean, Tails could die in this movie. No, I don't think he will. Um, but it's just, you know, like, it's just how it is. Uh, and I actually, I did share um, an article on Twitter when this was being talked about, the dark arts of poster billing. And this is a great article on Den of Geek from 2017 that just talks about why and how... Uh, names are the way they are at the top of posters. I mean, I know you guys watching this are probably like largely in your 20s, maybe early 30s. So you don't know who any of these people are outside of maybe Dolly Parton. Um, but the names do not line up, as you can see here. This is Dolly Parton here. That's not right. This is, uh, I think that's Sally Field. You know, so it's very much, there's something going on here. Um, so you can check out this article for yourself. It's an interesting read. There's actually a really funny one I want to show here. So Steve McQueen and Paul Newman, big big name actors for their time, um, were kind of wrestling over who gets top billing. And so they reached a compromise where Steve McQueen gets top billing in the sense that he's the furthest to the left, the first thing you read. But Paul Newman is a little higher up so that he's the he might be the first thing you see. Um, Another instance of this down here is uh, Tony Curtis and Jerry Lewis. They just crisscross their names so that they both kind of get top billing. So, you know, it's it's just how the industry is. I don't think it's any slight on Colleen. I don't think it's like a there's a sexist reason behind it. Oh, look, like it's a guy. Guys in the corner are reacting to me reacting. Who are these people? Look at that. Hey, Mike. Um, but any anyway, it's just it's industry nonsense and, you know, can't change it. Um, the other big bit of news is that it was uh, confirmed that Sonic the Hedgehog 3 will be coming and that uh, we have a logo. Now, I very much bet that this logo will um, evolve as time goes on. I'm pretty sure the tails were added later on for the Sonic 2 movie. So we very well could be seeing Knuckles Dreads added to it or Metal Sonic Spikes or Shadow Spikes. It really all depends on what direction they're taking. I honestly think they're taking a longer, they're, they're gonna be taking a, a longer than a trilogy take on this franchise. I think they're gonna be looking to the Transformers movies, which have done a thing where 
it's not just three, it's like five movies, six movies, spin-offs. Um, so I don't think now is the time to introduce Shadow. I think, I mean, my speculation is, and I've seen others speculating it, is that the Sonic 2 movie will end with um, revealing Metal Sonic. And then Sonic 3 will be Sonic versus Metal. They'll introduce Amy Rose, and we'll have a lot of information coming from the next uh, project to come, which will actually come before 3, which is a Knuckles the Echidna spin-off series on Paramount Plus, which is such a huge surprise. Like, I did not see this coming. But Knuckles was, for the longest time, uh, you know, number two to Sonic because we had the Son Archie Sonic comic followed by a Knuckles miniseries and a Knuckles ongoing series, which ran, I think, 30-something issues. Uh, famously, Ken Penders created a lot of the lore there, so I'm sure he'll try to sue Paramount at some point. Uh, Knuckles also was the first... I believe, first character to have a spin-off game, though I could be wrong. I think Tails might have beat him to it, uh, as well as Mean Bean Machine there. But the first, I think, uh, platformer from Sonic Team proper uh, to not be like a portable game, for sure. And then Knuckles also had... I'm trying to think what else he had. He had something else. I don't know what else. But he, he definitely does have this uh, miniseries coming out now. I have absolutely no idea what it will cover, um, but it is clear that Idris Elba will be returning. They say it's live action. I'm not sure if it's going to be after Sonic 2 or a prequel, so we'll see how he met uh, Robotnik. I mean, there could be some surprises. We could see cameos from Sonic and Tails. I think that's definitely likely. Uh, Jim Carrey cameo? I don't know about that. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. And it's interesting, too, because right now I'm watching um, Peacemaker, and Peacemaker was a HBO Max miniseries that came out of The Suicide Squad, and that starred Idris Elba, but it ended up being John Cena that got the show. And it's just funny now how Idris Elba is in the Sonic 2 movie, and he's getting a miniseries on Paramount+. Plus. So... Yeah, Sega and Paramount seem to be all in on this. We also have the Netflix Sonic show coming out. So no studio owns Sonic uh, at this point. But it is very interesting that Sega is very quickly building up a Sonic the Hedgehog portfolio of content that makes me wonder if they at some point will sign an uh, exclusivity deal with some major studio. I mean, I don't think they'll sell Sonic. Um but it would be interesting if, uh, you know, after this Netflix series airs, Netflix or Paramount, like, they try to money hat the other one and just say, like, look, we want to be the home of Sonic from here on out. Um, it, it, you know, it's unique with Ninja Turtles because a film studio actually owns them. But with Sonic, it's one of those rare properties where no a film studio does not own it. Though Sega does have their own um, animation team who has done work on the Sonic movies, TMS Entertainment, I believe. So it's it's all very interesting, um, very exciting to see where the franchise is going from, from here. Uh, wow, <laughs> I covered a lot in um, 15 minutes. So uh, let's, let's jump over to segabits.com and look at some of the news that I didn't cover earlier on there. Look, this is actually kind of uh, like inception here. We can actually see ourselves covering the news. So let's talk about ourselves. Um, anyone in the comments below, you can leave some questions, comments. I'll bring it up on the screen as I talk about some other stuff going on with the site and in Sega News. So it is Shen Month at SegaBits.com because, I don't know, Shenmue stuff just happens to be going on. So we have landing, I believe on Sunday, the epic two-and-a-half-hour <laughs> retrospective video podcast covering Shenmue 3. Uh, it is a long time coming. Shenmue 3 is a game that we covered extensively but never reviewed. And uh, I guess the reason for that is we never got a review copy, and by the time we got around to playing it, there were... There were um, patches coming out so it seemed unfair to be like man this this one element's really broken and then like a patch comes out that <laughs> makes the review basically obsolete so if you want to hear our scores if you like letter grades those will definitely be there um we're also doing after shows so we already have the shenmu the anime shon anime hmm. episode two daybreak where we talk for uh, 15 20 minutes um look over 
you know, the the episode compared to the game, share our own commentary. I really love that show. It's it's kind of awesome that in 2022, Shenmue and Sonic both are releasing what look to be some pretty quality content. It's been a long time since this much visual Sega content has gone out there. I think the last time was probably in the 90s when there were a lot of anime adaptations. There was Panzer Dragoon, which was so-so, Virtua Fighter. Uh, there's also Fantasy Star Online 2 animes going on right now, so interesting stuff. Of course, the news we already covered with Knuckles the Enchilada. And then this is very cool. So there is a rumor of a Wonder Boy collection coming out. It's been rated by the ESRB for Switch and PS4. And uh, yeah, it's Wonder Boy has seen a lot of love over the past few years. We've seen remakes, remasters, and it seems like now we are seeing at least four Wonder Boy Monster World titles in one collection. Um, it's unknown exactly which games will be in it, though I will bet that there will be no overlapping with games that have either seen remasters or remasters that include the original version, which is smart because, you know, you don't want to step on the toes of another developer releasing something and compete for the same game on the same shelf on the same uh, console. There was also that Sonic 2 Big Game Spot, um, which when I read that Big Game Spot, no, not the GameSpot.com, but actually the Super Bowl, and it's a cool trailer. Check it out. I'm not going to play it here because it's been out for a while. Um, but spoiler alert, it does showcase the Death Egg uh, robot, but no Death Egg. So I'm wondering what we're going to call it since apparently there's no Death Egg, but maybe that's going to be a reveal. Um, there is also, and I will not show images because I got a takedown notice from Paramount. Uh, this this Paramount lawyer, like we got this email with his name and information. He's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm Saul Goodman. I'm the lawyer for Paramount. Uh, and it's like, remove your images of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Happy Meal toys that are infringing on our rights, <laughs> which is just hilarious. Um, but yeah, a Sonic 2 Happy Meal promotion is coming. I shared that out on Twitter. I got my hand slapped, but Yuji Naka shared it, and I just retweeted him a bunch. And I think he got his hand slapped, which is hilarious. It's like someone telling Walt Disney he he spoiled the ending to Kingdom Hearts. He'd be like, bitch, I'm Walt Disney. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. And I noted when I brought it up on Twitter that it was the like the first Happy Meal promotion since Sonic 3 at McDonald's. I was incorrect in saying that, but my intent was it was the first figures, like action little character figure toys since Sonic 3 from McDonald's because between then and now we've had uh, two LCD game collections, which are cool, but they're not like little figure toys. And if if you were around when the Sonic 3 Happy Meals came out, that was the very first time we had actual physical toys of Sonic to play with outside of a cookie crisp promo of Sonic on a skateboard, which I believe is the very first Sonic figure ever released to the West and possibly worldwide because that came out very early. Um, but it's exciting. So it showcased, I believe, Knuckles, Tails, and the Death Egg robot. They look kind of cheap. They look much cheaper than even stuff released in the 90s, um, but it's at least um, made of plastic, which I believe McDonald's had said previously that they were moving away from plastic toys, more into like the crummy paper toys sort of game, um, game, uh, toy. So yeah, exciting stuff. Uh, we also did a printer show uh, on Swing Report Show Live. This was a lot of fun. I had no... I mean, I had no idea where it would go, but basically I dug out a Sega printer. We fiddled around with it live on air, and we got it to start printing stuff. So if you want to see the first and only video of the Sega Prefund printer in action um, ever, it's there. Because there are some other videos, but it's like some French guy like going, and he's just like fiddling around with it, and he's like, goodbye. And then the other one, I think, is a Sega Shiro guy and it's like him green screened off to the corner holding it up and then saying like i own one i'm like yeah dude but you didn't plug it in and actually print something plus ha 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 he's our new um our new enemy right because we haven't had a rival for a while at sega bits all the rivals are dropping like flies and our friends at sega driven will never be rivals but but this sega shiro guy i i say to you plug in your printer and print my friend 
or you will lose all respect from me. So that's that's out there now. Um, we also had a Virtua Fighter like thing to plug into it, which was pretty cool. Uh, there is this magazine coming out. It's called Lock On Magazine. They have a Kickstarter. I believe it has been funded by now, but it's still open. Um, I in no way endorse it or tell you to support it, but you can check it out, make your decisions on your own. Um, but it's cool. It looks like half of it's going to be Shenmue related or Dreamcast related, and they have done it twice already, so this won't be vaporware. Unlike Elysian Shadows, those uh, dicks who took my $60, I want that money back. Um, so yeah, that, that just about does it for the Sega News of the world, let's check the comments section. So in here we have Elk Plays and Paints who says, I think that Wonder Boy collection may include arcade and Master System games. So even though Monster Land had a Sega Ages version, that would allow them to still include the game. Well, that's really interesting. And um, I really liked that Disney Classics collection that recently came out. I haven't picked up the new, new one that has the additional um, movie in it. I forgot which one it is, Jungle Book or something. But it's it's really cool to have Sega and Nintendo games in one package, including the portable ones. I think when the Sonic Origins collection comes out, I really hope they don't drop the ball and like not include Game Gear games, even if they're straight, you know, ports or running on an emulator. Like those games need to be re-released in some way, shape, or form. And you know, I think the last time they really came out officially was some of them on the 3DS, and even before that, it was in a um, the uh, compilation, the uh, the Plus uh, Gems Plus collection. So, yeah, um, looking forward to that. And coming soon from Sega Bits, like I mentioned on Sunday, we have the Shenmue 3 Sega Top dropping. Top Sega Top talk, um, and that is going to be available right now too on our Patreon. So, if you're a Patreon supporter, you want to become one. You can check that out. And then next week, on Wednesday, we have Liesl Wilkerson coming back to the show. A uh, friend of the show. We love her. She is awesome. So she uh, grew up, lived in Japan. She was an interpreter, a, um, I guess, concierge, like showed people around. And she was a voice actor. She was the voice of Joy in Shenmue 2, as well as, I believe it's Yuan who is one of the first trans characters in video games. We talked about that last time she was on. Um, she also did the voice of Gina for Crazy Taxi, and she was Sarah Bryant in Virtua Quest and Virtua Fighter 5, which is really funny because she is still being credited for Virtua Fighter 5 just because the game appears in like Judgment and in games like that. Um, and she was in the movie Lost in Translation, so I'm going to ask her for some Bill Murray stories. That'll be fun. But... Yeah, that just about does it. Uh, we will be back in two weeks to look at the, the news unless something big drops. And like I said, we have Shenmue after shows dropping every week. Uh, it's a great time to be a Sega fan, a great time to <laughs> be one of the few hundred people watching these videos. Man, what happened with YouTube? We used to get thousands. Now we get 200. Wow. But hey, I, I say I'd rather have 200 people be engaged with my stuff than 1,000 people look at it and go, oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, so without further ado, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of the week and have a great weekend. And we will see you the next time on Sega Noobs Bit Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>